Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. Why is it that the digits in the speed of light, 299-792-458, are identical to the latitude of the Great Pyramid of Giza? I have no idea. I just know that there are, there's something mysterious about numbers in general, whether we're talking about biblical uh, numerology uh, uh, or whether we're talking about science or mathematics or, or, or anything else. There are 77 months and 77 days from that 2017 eclipse August 21st, 2017, to the April 8, 2024 eclipse. We are living uh, in a period of time, I believe, in which there are just a great number of, of, of strange anomalies taking place. I want to spend some time in this uh, Wednesday night video to, to, to cover some of these, but and I also, I have a timetable I want you to look at, that a chart that I made that, that sort of gives us a bird's eye view of the past 120 some odd years, 20, I can't remember right offhand. We'll look at it here in a few moments. I just want to preface this with a, a, a couple of facts. Uh, I try to deal in facts, uh, not in conjecture, superstition, uh, that sort of thing. It uh, seems always seems it's always seemed to me to, to be uh, you're playing on the safe side when you do that, and then just allow people to make up draw their own minds about draw their own conclusions from all of that. We know that that we are now witnessing a sharp rise in global anti-Semitism. Uh, it is terrifying to the Jews, uh, both inside and outside Israel. I personally believe that what we are seeing with that is God is crying out for His people to return. He's been doing this for some time, and the reason for that, I think, is fairly plain, and that is the, the whole entire purpose for this final period in this age and God bringing His people back to the land is for judgment. The U United Nations, they, had a res they passed a resolution, uh, uh, 2334, that uh, basically stated that Israel's uh, acquisition of territory by force in 1967, including East Jerusalem, uh, is without legal validity, uh, which would make all the, the settlement construction in occupied territory illegal. And it, so it, it requires Israel's withdrawal to the 1949 armistice lines uh, many of you are well aware of the fact of just how anti-Israel the United Nations is, especially the United Nations uh, Security Council. A while back, uh, I published a lot of data uh, surrounding the Trump 7 phenomenon uh, and also how Interesting it was, at least to me, that he's, he was born uh, on June uh, the 14th of 1946. Uh, June 14 being the exact same date of Judah's birth. Uh, that can be verified uh, uh, through a, a number of different avenues. But he was also born on a total eclipse. 
There's so many sevens that are associated with that man that I've lost track of them. As a reminder, the Balfour Declaration was a public statement issued by the British government in 1917 during the First World War, announcing its support for the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people in Palestine, uh, which was then an, an Ottoman region with, with a very small minority Jewish popula population. You also, if you follow this channel, you've heard me speak of the deadly wound that is healed being, I suggested that is the revived Ottoman Empire, which I believe we are now witnessing. I believe we are witnessing that deadly wound that is healed, that is spoken of in Revelation. Whereas many watchers, many Bible prophets, prophecy students, uh, while they explore the, the ideas that, that perhaps the Antichrist comes out of Rome or the United States or, or other places, I've, I have practically insisted uh, that he comes out of Turkey. And uh, so we've been watching Erdogan, Prime Minister Erdogan, very carefully. And he's, he's done a great number of things which, that give weight, I believe, to that, uh, that idea that uh, the Antichrist does come out of Turkey. And that I believe Turkey is the king of the north, not Russia. You know, it's not... You know, it's everything you hear today, everything we've ever heard for years has been, you know, Russia, Russia, Russia. I do not believe it's Russia. I believe Russia may be involved. I also suggested that Gog and Magog was a term used which represents all the nations of the earth. Uh, we here at Blessed Hope Forever are not, we didn't, uh, we didn't set out, in, you know, from the beginning uh, with the... Uh, uh, a uh, sort of a preconceived idea, a plan, uh, you know, that we were going to swim against the tide, go against the grain, blow against the wind on, on everything. But it just seems like that there is so much misinformation out there that much of what is true is just going unnoticed and by the majority, and that is not surprising to me at all. Uh, Sue's pie crust recipe, uh, I don't know how that made it into this folder, but you might want to try that because the crust is to die for. I pointed out, I think in previous, uh, some previous video that it was on October the 7th, that very day that Hamas attacked Israel. It was on that day in 2001 that President Bush announced that the United States had begun military action in Afghanistan. Now you can do what you want with that, but it's, uh, I find it strangely odd that here we are going after them on, on, on an October 7, and then Hamas attacks Israel on October 7. This was shortly after 9-11, our 9-11, which uh, many today are referring to Israel being attacked by Hamas October 7th as their 9-11, which I am in absolute 100% agree, agreement with. I believe that it, it is not a, we're not really a push, we're not stretching that to say that that was their 9-11. Now, whether uh, uh, whoever was in charge of, of design, of, of organizing that attack on Israel, whether they decided they were going to do that on October 7th, because that's what Bush did on October 7th, 2001, when it, uh, it began military action in Afghanistan, 
in which the initial strikes were against al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and Taliban military installations, whether they, they planned that, uh, I can't tell you. What I can tell you is that we do not serve a God of chance. That our God is supremely sovereign over every minute detail of our lives. We've got an April 8th eclipse coming up next year. I find it interesting that on April 8th in 1864, the Senate took the first crucial step toward the constitutional abolition of slavery. Now you can do whatever you want to with that, but uh, I felt that that was interesting enough to include that in, in my chart. It's also interesting to me that if you go to Torah calendar, you look on the Hebrew calendar, April 8th is uh, Yom HaShoah, that is Israel's state hol holiday. It's a, a holiday. It's the Holocaust Remembrance Day on the day of the eclipse that crosses out America next year, uh, April 8th, uh, is the date, April 8th, 2024. Uh, it seems to me God obviously wants Israel to remember the Holocaust on the very day that we, the United States of America, get crossed out uh, by this second great American solar eclipse. As far as the last days goes, well, because I've, I've been asked a lot, Steve, are we really in the last days? I, I suggested in a previous video, I believe that we were at the end of the end of the end, uh, end days. The last days. Uh, we're living in the very last of the last of the last days. I believe that's how close we are. And I believe all of the evidence combined as a whole tend to support that idea. The Scripturally, the last days is a phrase denoting the closing period of the world, that is the days of the Messiah, from His first coming to the end of of his millennial reign on earth. It covers every living soul who's ever lived or will live from Jesus' birth to the end of the kingdom age. This time frame is known as the day of the Lord, That's which is a diff different than the last days. The last days meaning uh, from his first coming to the end of the millennial reign, uh, the day of the Lord referring to that time period that begins at the, with the tribulation and runs all the way through to the end of the millennial age. According to the Pew Research Center, there's been a 388% rise in anti-Semitism since 2021. I can tell you for a fact that it's, I mean, I'm 66, I've lived on this earth for 66 years, coming up on 67, I have never seen anything like this. And I doubt that many of you have either. One interesting fact about uh, President Biden is that he begins his final year as president January 21st of next year. That, that will be 77 months exact from the August 21st, 2017 eclipse. And 77 days into that final year, the second eclipse occurs. April 8, 2024. These are things that you just can't make up. This is what I love so much about numbers. You can't really manipulate the numbers. We know that it was seven years from the beginning of the Holocaust in, in 1941 to Israel being reborn in 1948. Seven years. I've, I've been recently, I've been posting a number of things to uh, Facebook concerning that number seven. Many things that, uh, so it, it, there seems to be a, a real divine aura 
uh, about that number. Of course, we know that six equals man, and so why wouldn't seven equal God? We, we always talk about seven means completion, but I think seven is God's number. Uh, and it sh shows up a lot. It's, it's, it's appearing a lot, especially now at this particular age in which we're, this place in which we're at here. So Hamas attacks Israel. Israel's 9-11, October 7, 2023. If you go count from there to Israel's birthday, May 14th, 2024, which just happens to be Pentecost on the Hebrew calendar, uh, seven months, seven days. We we'll talked a little bit about the nations that conspire against Israel in the Psalm 83 uh, war. Uh, there are verses that provide the names of the ten nations which have formed a coalition against Israel. I also suggested that uh, it would probably be a big mistake, uh, just as uh, we made so many mistakes uh, before, like for example, with the Revelation 12 sign, we thought this was going to be an event. Turned out it was a sign, even though we went around, run around saying Revelation 12 sign, uh, we, tended, we, we, we tended to look at that as an event, uh, or a sign, an event rather than a sign. Uh, I think what we are seeing taking place in the Middle East right now is a buildup obviously, to Psalm 83. Uh, it's hard, and the reason I say that is because it's hard for me to imagine this going in reverse, us going back to a, a pre, uh, let's say, October 6th world, okay? Uh, the day before 9-11 in America, uh, our 9-11, It's uh, it was just a different world. I just I don't see where this is going to result in anything but a continuation or a furtherance of God's timetable concerning the the, the events that occurred in the last days. Recently, I spoke spoke about the 120 years and how that we have this 120 uh, or 120 jubilees, that's 6,000 years on this time frame, with a, with a 120 year pattern uh, at the end of it. And, that, and what I liked about that was that it was not a timeline, but it was a construction of highly relevant, simple, irrefutable, verifiable historical facts. Uh, and the amazing fact is that these 120-year events could not be placed anywhere else in the 120 Jubilee timeline. Now, I could sit here and talk about Trump sevens all day. I could, I could talk about Trump and, and his relationship to to Jerusalem and Israel and and uh, uh, Putin, there's there's many sevens that are related to Trump that have in the context uh, uh, many of the things which are going on now. If you look at them in hindsight, it's almost like reading the newspaper. Uh, uh, it is not some strange coincidence, at least in my opinion, that Donald J. Trump in English gematria equals 888. God uses numbers in a big way, I believe, to get our attention, to draw our attention to uh, relevant things concerning things that matter. So I'm going to put this chart up here, and I'm going to try to uh, just very quickly uh, explain 
what I've done in constructing this and, and, and how I've, the reason I've separated this into three sections as I have, uh, we've got a 20 year period, a 100 year period, and a seven year period. Now, if you look at the meaning of these numbers in the Bible, 20 represents a waiting period. 100 represents a complete, perfect waiting period. And of course, seven, the God number, uh, represents a completeness and perfection. So starting on the left side of the chart, 1897, first Zionist Congress, plus 20 years, to 1917, 1917, which is the Balfour Declaration. There is a 107 year period from 1917 to 2024. From 1917, World War One, Balfour Declaration, 100 years to the Revelation 12 sign. Many of you who are into history, you, you, you know the kind of the backstory behind, you know, what happened at the end of World War I, where the British were uh, in control of Palestine. Uh, this resulted in uh, their helping Israel become a, a nation again. So that takes us into the 100-year period, uh, beginning with uh, 1917. Uh, more that in 1918, we had the Spanish flu pandemic. 1918. Well, it just happened to be 2019, or you could even say 2018, depending on who knew about it, that COVID-19 came into our lives. So we've got the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. We're looking at 100 years from pandemic to pandemic. Is that a coincidence? The Great Depression years were 1929 to 1939. So, so we're looking at this kind of, we're getting this bird's eye view of, of this past 127 years. 1929 to 1939, the Great Depression. If, could there be a pattern you know, from 2029 to 2039, could there not, you know, it's kind of, you know, of course, that's a, that's, I know that's a, that's a giant leap in, in your imagination, but uh, we do, if nothing else, what it does is it shows that these years, 39 to 49, 45, they, they, they played a, a part in God's overall design or uh, for his program for the close of the age. This led to, you know, this resulted in the end of World War II, the Jewish Holocaust, okay, uh, in which, uh, which is interesting because you're, uh, they're calling for the destruction of Israel again. Uh, they have been for some time, for many years. Uh, and we've got the, the United Nations coming into existence in 1945. 1948, Israel's reborn. So during that period of 1948, being reborn after the end of World War II, <coughs> we had the rebirth of Israel uh, and in which war begins immediately. Immediately. There wasn't any... There wasn't a period of rest for Israel. I mean, they became a nation. Uh, surrounding nations attacked her right from the start. Now that's sort of what we... That period in which we might would look at or refer to as the greatest generation. It uh, happens to be a generation that I personally admire. Uh, my grandparents' generation. Uh, and it was at the end of that. It was at the end of 
1948, Israel becomes a nation. Uh, several years later, we're now in the 1950s, a time of post-war prosperity, and which led to, obviously, led to a cultural revolution. Hippies of the 60s, uh, you can go back to, I guess you could go back to even to the 50s when the, this cultural revolution began. There was a, it was followed by a, a technological explosion. And then we come to 1967, the Six Day War, which is really what the United Nations Resolution 2234 is all about that I discussed previously. But that wasn't good enough. Uh, 67, uh, Six Day War uh, was followed by a 19, the 1973 Yom Kippur War, which also seems to have a direct connection to October 7th of this year, in the sense that it's a jubilee. Then on 2001, the world changed forever. The America's 9-11. And as I mentioned, this resulted in George Bush beginning a conflict with those who attacked America, which were primarily radical Muslim terrorists, October 7 of 2001. In 2005, the Iranian president, many of you remember this, he called for Israel's destruction. And I believe he stood up at the United Nations and did that. 2005. That brought us then to 2008, Obama's change. And boy, was there a change. Once again, the cultural revolution. I have suggested a number of times my belief that the wheels of prophecy turn slowly. These things occur over a period of our lifetimes. If you were a Jew uh, back in when you were in bondage, to Egypt, Egypt, you know, you're there 400 years, 430 years, well, however long that was. Many generations pass, come and go. Uh, it's just, we look at it as one event in history, but it took generations. In 2015, the Supreme Court of the United States legalizes same-sex marriage or re removes the ban for, from it in all 50 states. 2015. 2015. This is two years prior to this first eclipse that occurred in 2017. I remember in 2016, the big thing was blood moons. Tetrads. Twenty sixteen. And that seems to all of that encompasses that one hundred year period which followed this twenty year period that you see on the left side of the chart. And now we come to a seven year period. Now you could say, well, how you could, I'm sure you could, you have every right to ask me, well, Steve, why, why is it a seven year period? I mean, uh, well, it's only a seven year period because you're beginning it at 2017 and you're stopping it at the eclipse in 2024. So it's seven years, but, but I mean, you know, it's only seven years because you stop it at 2024. Well, that's true. I'll grant you that. 2024 is the year that America's crossed out by that second great eclipse. Seven, as I mentioned, means completeness. 
It means perfection. We've seen so much in this past seven years that it's almost as if it's like you had, a, you had a snowball rolling down the hill and it just picked up speed until it got near the bottom. This the set last seven year period and it's just moving like, it's really, really fast. Things are, are moving fast. Uh, I honestly didn't expect to be here in 2023. I thought we'd be leaving in 2017. Of course, I was wrong, as many others were. We've seen so much during that period. In 2017, here comes Trump. Uh, now, he, it's Jerusalem is the new capital. Uh, Trump has a, a heavy hand in that. Uh, there's the great American solar eclipse, the first one in August of 2017, followed by the Revelation 12 sign just a little more than 30 days later. And then 2019, we were introduced to COVID. And at the very time that I first heard about COVID, I, all I could think about was the 1918 Spanish flu pandemic. So 2019, now just several years later, 2021, and now it's, it's all about the January 6th committee and uh, 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 what many believe was a stolen election, uh, voter fraud. And then in 2022, the red heifers arrive in Israel. followed by, just a year later, Russia invading Ukraine, Israel's 9-11, wars and rumors of wars, and a sharp rise in anti-Semitism. Dearly beloved, I believe God is calling His people home to Israel for judgment. In our case, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no judgment. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, and He is calling us home. I believe we are hearing the Lord call us home. My chart ends with the great American solar eclipse in 2024, where America is crossed out, divided, separated this tell you can't tell me that this division really did not seriously begin at the first eclipse in 2017. Now you can say well we've been divided long before that. That's true. In many ways we were, but not the way that we have been since 2017. So I present you this chart as a bird's eye view of the past 127 years, which is little more than a, well, you know, 120 is the, the years allotted for man. I just find it interesting enough to pass along to you folks for your consideration. Look, I love you all. I truly do. I continue to pray for you daily. I ask for your continued prayers for this ministry. Follow us on Sunday as we're going through our survey in Acts. Until then, rest in Him. This is Steve. Thanks for watching.